I know some of you saw this thing in the background and probably wondering what the heck it was. Well, it's exactly what it looks like it is. It's a couple of food line cutting boards and they happen to be screwed to a Subaru valve spring compressor tool. Now this thing's been modified so that it fits a Mitsubishi valve and the height of it was changed in order to meet the compression depth requirements for a Mitsubishi cylinder head. And the cool thing about it is there's lots of other valve spring compressor tools available. Some of them will leave the head hanging partially off the workbench so that you can get a tool to uh, touch the underside of the valve here. And it uses the valve as the point to compress the springs with on the opposite side. And working with the cylinder head hanging off the table isn't really fun because uh, you always have the chance of dropping it on a floor or something like that. Also, there's another tool that uh, screws down into the valve caps and it allows you to line up a compression plunger that screws in and compresses the valve so that you can get the keeper and the retainers and everything out. And so each time you want to move to a different valve, you're unbolting and rebolting and reorienting the thing all over the cylinder head. And that kind of stuff takes time. But the cool thing about this is that all you have to do is take two head bolts, line the thing up with the holes in the cutting board, and drop it in place, and you're now squared. And when you want to begin taking valves out, all you have to do is get your magnet. Sometimes it's handy to have a pick and a tub of grease. But you use this magnet, you center the tool over the valve spring, and you press down. And it just breaks it loose. Grab your keepers with a magnet, and there you go. There's the retainer. You'll notice something a little bit different about my valve springs. There's two of them. These are Crower dual valve springs. I've looked everywhere for specifications on these and I just can't find them. These are not Brian Crower dual valve springs, these are simply Crower dual valve springs. These have been discontinued and you can no longer find any information on the manufacturer's website about it, but it was a kit made specifically for the 4G63 and it has an inner and an outer spring and they're set to specific pressures. I don't know what they are. I want to find the information. My machine shop installed these and I didn't get the information slip. But uh, I'm going to have the machine shop check many of the variables about the spring's geometry and report back to me with what they find so that I can use these again in another project. So anyhow, I'm going to begin disassembling all of these and I'm going to leave the uh, retainers on the top of the springs so that I can determine which is the top and bottom sides. Now also, down below each one of these, there is a lower seat. I'll we'll be leaving that in for the moment. I'm just going to go down the... Uh, down the valve train and pull each one of the springs out. Oh, that one came out with it. When you reach the end of the valve train, repositioning the entire setup and jigging it up for the next set of valves is easy as pulling out those two head bolts, turning the head around, lining up the holes in the cutting board again, and we're square. down the hole. Easily fixed. And you want to turn the ice cube tray around so that you're working uh, on the opposite side. That way you know you have them all in the right order.
when you're done, you should have this arranged like this. Remember before, we did the same thing with our rockers and our lifters. So there we have the complete valve train for the HKS 264-272 camshaft. So now that I've got that all together, there's one more thing I want to do. There you go. There's the valve train. So what we have here are the spring seats, which are a third of the equation for the spring installed height measurement. We'll get to that. All that's left are the valves and the valve stem seals, and we'll have a bare head. The valve stem seals pull off easily with a pair of pliers, and you'll throw them away. I may leave the valve stem seals in there for now so I can play around with it for a bit, but let's flip the head over and remove the valves to get a better look at the seats. Flip the block up on its side and push the valve stem so you can easily snatch it and pull it through. Take a look at the seat area and the valves to ensure that the contact surface is even around the face of the valve. This one looks a little bit pitted, but I'm moving on for now. I like to use a pizza box to keep things organized. Just like with the ice cube trays, I mark an I and an E on the cam gear sides. This just makes it easier to keep track of things for what's coming up later. Now let's take a look at the seats. These seats were cut on a radius cutter. These were the ones that failed the water test. I can see precisely why. The seats are all pretty badly pitted, 48,000 miles after the last valve job. There's a lot that can contribute to this, but I'm not liking what I see on the first glance. Doubt much any of that is going to wipe off. Most of what I see here, after knowing they've been ground and recessed already once, makes me want to replace these seats. I can try lapping them into shape, but for the sake of time, not in this video. If you're not immediately reassembling them, bolt all of your cam caps back into place so that you have them. This is the pickup for the cam angle sensor on a 95, 96, 4G, 6.3 cylinder head. The other half is riveted to the back of the intake cam sprocket. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with this yet. This kind of thing limits my options with adjustable cam gears and I'll be looking into more of that later. Taking an extra 30 seconds to bag and tag parts and their fasteners keeps you from wasting hours looking for things later. Especially if you're disassembling more than one of them. So let's check out old Buck Nasty with its 70,000 mile old factory valve job. There it is. You can see it for yourself. Factory three angle valve job. It's got 60,000 miles on it. Notice the spring seat surface is shiny. Nice and polished. This is what it should look like. These look great. There's absolutely nothing wrong with these. Valve seats in perfect condition. It came clean with liquid cleaners. Now, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> but they could look better if I spent some time on it, but I don't need to touch these. So, let's get a second look at that other head. The valve contact areas are so pitted, I can't even see them. I think it's time to go with a new seat. Some of the intake valves aren't so bad, but the exhaust ones are just toast. 